Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ben. I'm Tiffany. Today we're talking about Superman Godfall, and I am kind of excited about it because uh, I've been sitting on this book for a long time. It came out in 2004. Isn't that a it's way to almost your books? 20 it's years old. That's right. Yeah, well, I've been sitting on it for a while. Is it hatching? Yeah, it, it's hatching a fun story <laughs> that will never pay off. There's actually a little bit of carryover into other stories, but with significantly diminished returns. This is co-written by Joe Kelly Whoa. and Michael Turner, and it is drawn by Talent Caldwell. They both, uh, Michael Turner and Talent Caldwell, came from Aspen Studios, the uh, oh. Aspen Comp, uh -huh, uh, created by Michael Turner, now uh, d uh, no longer with us, uh, a consummate artist. Uh, I loved his work and uh, taken too soon, before his time, hmm. unfortunately. Uh, and yeah, but he is known for reintroducing the DC Universe to Supergirl post-crisis and introducing the comic book community to women with uh, body standards that uh, are, are impossible. completely impossible to replicate in real life. There's no tie-in for this, it's just Superman book. Okay. Um, sometimes Superman books, the best kind of Superman books are standalones. You know, they're kind of like divorced from everything. Unfortunately, this is not one of them. Uh, it is significantly connected to a thing that happened before, which I'm not gonna reference or talk about at all. Just suffice to say, Superman had a big old adventure that like, we don't have the trade paperback for, in which he falls through time and crap, and it doesn't matter. The point is he gets back, and then he immediately falls from that adventure into this adventure, and there's no break in between, so Lois is like, like, where the hell is Clark? Okay. Like, he's been gone for, like, a, a, a couple of weeks. Are they married? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Does she, and she knows. She does, yes. Okay. No, it's Obviously. A, it's post-crisis Superman, so it's in the 2000s, Superman's married, uh, he died, uh, and, and all that stuff. Like, everything you know and love about Superman is here in this book. Uh, the idea was Joe Kelly had written some Superman stories for a while, and then he's like, all right, my time at Superman's done. What else am I doing? Because I want to make sure I get paid. And so he talks to the editors, and he's like, what am I going to do next? And they're like, how about a Superman story with the Aspen guys? And he's like, I would love to work with Michael Turner. Yes, let's do that. So then Joe Kelly meets up with Michael Turner, and Michael Turner's only request is, I want to see Superman on a motorcycle, like in Akira, because that shit is fire. And Joe Kelly's like, I agree. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna get Superman on a motorcycle, but we are gonna, and it's gonna look dope. I can't believe we haven't done this before. It's, it's like, oh, oh, of course you can, because he flies. He doesn't need a motorcycle. That's like the Spider-Mobile, which of course was invented to be a joke. He, he doesn't even have his driver's license because he was born and bred in Queens. He's like, I don't need one of those. I take the subway. I take the subway. Or I web sling. I've been doing that since 15. I've never needed to drive. Yeah, but he took the subway before that. That's true. So With his Aunt May. Right. <laughs> because otherwise it's because it's, it's dangerous. <laughs> also, he pushed her little cart full of groceries. <laughs> uh, he pulled it. She pulled her own. If she's anything like my grandma from Brooklyn, she carted that shit all across the five boroughs <laughs> by her tiny self. So and Don't get in her way. No. She will take you down. She, at the very least, she will flip you the bird in a super aggressive way. My grandma was the scourge of Brooklyn for the time, uh, the, the, the long period in which she was alive. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Turner and Joe Kelly are just like, let's go. Superman driving a motorcycle, which is why off mic, these guys are like, uh, why is Superman driving what appears to be the motorcycle from Akira? And I'm like, he's uh, doing the pose and everything. Yeah, you can buy this as a goddamn statue. And it's the size of a dog. What? It's like Whoa. this big. <laughs> a corgi, but still. That's Still a dog. a dog. It's a, or a very large cat. Bigger than a chihuahua. Damn right. Which isn't a dog. It's a rat. That's a rat hey. with a great PR agent. <laughs> hey Ben, do you drive a motorcycle or do you, do you ride, ride a, motorcycle? a motorcycle? I wasn't gonna say that. Okay, <laughs> I was. I'm like, he said drive a motorcycle. I think you this do drive This guy here them. says drive a motorcycle. So yeah, no, you ride a motorcycle. Oh. If he can't fly, is he like deppowered? Yes. Oh. That means he should be wearing a motherfucking helmet. <laughs> yeah, oh. but you don't look but cool then you with can't a helmet. But see his face. That's right. You that's not know true. There's a visor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. No, okay. listen. I know. Wear your helmets, folks. Superman wakes up and he's in another place and he doesn't know that he's Superman. So that's where we are. Oh, okay. Now, does I'm, he know that he's Clark? He does not. Does he know that he's Kal El? He does because he wakes up and he believes he's on Krypton. Okay. Like it never died. No, okay. Everything's still good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just like, I've lived here my whole life. Yes, exactly. And he's married 
oh. to a Michael Turner looking woman uh -huh. uh, named Lila. And Lila is an interesting character. Who Lana, Lois, Lila. Oh, she has yeah. two L names and she is alliterative and she's the post-crisis Lila. There was another Lila. Uh, that Lila was invented in the 60s and it was Superman goes back in time to before Krypton blows up, goes to Krypton, meets this woman named Lila, falls head over heels in love with her, and then tries to marry her and then realize like, oh, I gotta go back to the future, and so it never works out. It's an ongoing joke within Superman writers to introduce a, uh, Superman to another L-named person. I bet he loves Lululemon. So we see Superman, and he's describing having a dream in which he's flying, and it's kind of like this, why does everybody always dream about flying? Like, why is this something that unites us as a species? Not a species of humans, mind you, a species of Kryptonians. <laughs> but uh, you could get the idea. And uh, of course, he dreams of flying because they're subliminal and he's remembering flying, but he doesn't know that because his mind is scrambled. And uh, he's doing the next best thing, which is riding a motorcycle. And uh, as our resident motorcycle rider, uh, I suppose you can weigh in on whether that's accurate or not. But yeah. He's, he's having a great time. This is I mean, a yeah. Kryptonian motorcycle? Oh, yeah, no, of course. Okay. Futuristic Kryptonian motorcycle. Oh. He's also, like, really going on some crazy jumps. Oh, yeah. Well, would, you know. would the cape screw him up? It's not really like a cape cape. It's more like a, a extension of his jacket outfit. But yeah, uh, in might there opinion, be drag? I don't think so. I think drag. I think she's worried about the rear tire. Yeah. Mm. Probably not. All kinds of things. Yeah, if it. If it draped, thankfully it's not Batman's cape. It, so it, it would get impossibly. It would be very hard for it to go far enough back and get sucked under the tire because everything's blowing back. What if you had back. stopped at some point and went like, and then it to draped. the side and then you went? Again, it would go down, but I'm pretty sure the tire then would just like it's not like a giant weight is on the back That's of them true. like dragging yeah. it down. It'd probably be fine, right? <laughs> this is not like a gravity I, well in that wheel I, area. I, I probably wouldn't wear it. You'd be you'd be more. I'd be like, you know what. But yeah, he's not he's uh, not wearing a helmet. He has no eye protection. No, that's true. If you're if you're not gonna wear a helmet on the states that don't allow it, which I don't get, mm -hmm. least wear glasses. Right. A bug hitting your eye at 70 miles an hour <laughs> is going to liquefy it. <laughs> the bug or your eye? Both. Mm. Oh. So Superman in this reality, Kal-El that is, uh, he works as like a very, very low level security force agent. Like he works for the police but on like the lowest possible rung of the ladder. Oh, I thought we were seeing him as like a chef, like a, no, he's, like a bonsai style chef. Yeah, he's actually just or, a crappy cook and yeah. he burned dinner. That's what you're seeing Hibachi, in this situation. that was the word I wanted. Yeah, uh, I see. Yeah, no, he he's he's sad because he didn't really get a chance to do anything, but at least he got a ride in. You know, he's like, all right, that feels good. I feel like more myself. So he's like, he's nothing special. That's right. He's. Thoroughly he, unremarkable. He's like the son of Jor-El, but I guess Jor-El, is Jor-El like a laughing stock? Jor-El is dead. Uh, no, Jor-El- What? Uh, Jor-El saved Krypton oh. with his series of like- So he was right, it wasn't like, He oh. was right, but they laughed at him when he first brought his findings to the council, uh, and then uh, subsequently like took measures to protect Krypton and keep it from so blowing apart. Instead of a rocket sending his baby to Earth, mm -hmm. they took a rocket, put a team on it, they drilled a hole, put a nuke in that, yes. in that meteor. That's right. And blew it apart. So Clark is thoroughly unremarkable, but at least he is married to a smoking hot babe. Well, uh, he's buff too. Uh, well, he lo he's still Superman. There's nothing he can do about that. I mean, you know, that's just genetics. And uh, so he's trying to make dinner for her and he burns it. And uh, the, I think the idea is that like, they have all this great technology. It could make the food, but you know, I'm a grassroots kind of guy. I gotta make, dinner for my wife, show I'm a provider, you know? And uh, he fails because he's like a clumsy oaf because he's like marrying the two con like ideas of like, you know, Superman Clark and, and Clark yeah. into one person. Uh, but also he doesn't have a super Kryptonian brain on Earth. <laughs> that is so not how that works. What the fuck? I mean, th this is Lila. Okay. Look, it's a Michael Turner drawing. I mean, it's actually a talent Caldwell drawing, but it is from Aspen. So yeah. Okay. She's gonna look I, like I, this. I know what we're in for now. She's got <laughs> markings, kind of like- Why uh, does she look like she's from Aspen and not from Krypton? Well, I think it's because we want to capitalize on Aspen's popularity at this time by infusing that. Michael Turner doesn't draw the book, but he does provide the covers. 
Uh, incidentally, this uh, story arc goes across all the Superman titles at the time. It's not like it's just Superman Godfall 1 through 4. The reason why she looks exactly like an Aspen creation as opposed to anything like, from the DC universe. She could universe. be in Fathom. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely she does. Yeah, she does look like Paul Talzan, but she's not blue. From Farscape? Oh, Thank from you. from Farscape. I was like, I don't remember that from Stargate. Listen, folks. I can see that. Keep up. Yeah. Second, well, uh, well, she she is, is, she one is, last thing. She wants to bang him, apparently. Yeah, big time. I read that there. Yeah. You have a child at home. That kid could walk in the door no. any moment. No, they don't. I saw a kid playing outside. I assumed it was theirs. You were wrong. Okay. And no one of the neighborhood kids are hanging around their house. Yeah, because Lila's here. <laughs> uh, no, she is an alien, though. Uh, alien oh. from Kryptonians. Like, she's not just, like, some odd offshoot of Kryptonians. She's a completely separate alien race. Oh, so and it's she's... important that we make that distinction because there is a like undercurrent because it's written by Joe Kelly. So like there's going to be some kind of like real world applicability here. Sure. It's going to be a lesson to be learned about I'm, xenophobia. I'm, I'm ready to go, Joe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that the pitch at DC was just like, hey, how about you write some Superman with the Aspen people? Like we're trying to capitalize. This is, you know, in, in 20 years, they're gonna do Batman Spawn 3, and it's yeah. gonna be the same reason. Maybe, we're just gonna get an maybe image. not the same reason, but you know. We're just gonna get an image of uh, Kal-El jumping out of the water without a bathing suit on, but yes. the froth of the water is covering up his bits. I wish that were a thing. I wish there was some kind of like tit for tat. No pun intended. Uh, but yeah, so uh, they make out a little bit, and of course, you know, like, what the hell, good, but good we, we just kind of move past the whole infidelity thing, because he doesn't know he's towel? married. Uh, it's it's a head covering. Yeah, this is this is what she wears around the house. She was in the shower. She was in the shower. But like, yeah, that's her headband. Yeah. So good thing that Clark's a good guy because yeah. when he wakes up, he's gonna be like, <sighs> I did that. <laughs> I'll just you know I'm gonna file this under spank bank. <laughs> <laughs> Things I don't tell Lois about, but all right. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Cal is clearly befuddled and he is in kind of like a really dour mood he's just like because he we know that he is superman he's married and mm -hmm. he shouldn't be here and he mm -hmm. burned brec dinner breakfast breakfast but yeah he's feeling out of sorts and she knows it and is trying to distract him from any rationality <laughs> and cognition of things that are wrong that's fair so you know he's just like yeah i don't know there's something wrong there's something wrong with this Reality, and it's like, oh man, this is kind of like, what do you get for the man who has everything? everything? Yeah. But like, not, you know, but with a cool Akira bite. But instead it, of it being a plant, it's a hot chick. Yes, is or a sun. Is it Oh yeah. Yeah, in a way. Okay. Of like, course, well we need some kind of antagonism. Like the to... movie? What? I mean, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> the movie in City with Darth Maul? No. Yeah. Do, do, do. So next door to Cal and Lila is a family that looks eerily suspiciously similar to Jor-El, Lara, and Cal, if Cal were a boy, like a, like a young boy. And uh, that's the Lar family. And so Khan Lar is the like young boy that takes a shine to Superman or Cal. And uh, Cal has kind of like a older brother, almost like fatherly, like uh, f compulsion to this boy. You know, he's just like, hey, this kid, you know, he, I, I don't know why, but I like the cut of his jib. I'm gonna be like he's nice like, to Mr. Him. L, your bicep's bigger than my head. <laughs> That's because I'm drawn by Town Call. Well, there's nothing you can do about that kid, sorry. <laughs> Maybe one day you will be as buff as me. Almost guarantee it if you live that long. So, <laughs> Mr. L, you got a smoking hot wife and a sweet ride. I wanna be you <laughs> so bad. He's like, so does everyone's kid. Get the hell out of the way. <laughs> You know what? I'm not going to work today. I'm calling in sick to bang my Aspen looking wife again. I'm on the bike. Circle. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Bike sex. <laughs> so uh, they are plagued by tremors. Again. Uh oh. Oh no, worms in the ground that can sense your movement and eat you. No, the real kind, like if, earthquakes. If you walk with that rhythm. You won't attract the worm. Ben. That is a lesson that both Fatboy Slim and the film Tremors will teach you. True. Anyway. And Dune. It, the, Dune. The point is, we're supposed to like, oh, this is supposed to shake. The, the Jor-El thing didn't take, huh? Right. No. <laughs> well, it's just, it, 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 sometimes we're gonna get that. Oh, okay. You know, but it's a small price to pay for being alive. And uh, but oh, Jor-El like died. Right. Conveniently enough, like he passed away. He never got to see like his, his dream realized or whatever. So yay. Remember me. 
<laughs> huh? Yeah. So uh, Cal hops on his bike and he's going to report to work and he's uh, intercepted by a bunch of uh, aliens. And it's like a little uh, biker gang of different types of aliens. I thought it was going to be his like team. I thought he was going to work and he worked with people that also rode motorcycles and yeah. it was like a motorcycle gang. Right, like judges. <laughs> yeah. But no. Uh, instead, this is just a this is a freedom fighting group of aliens who are railing against the xenophobic laws that have been passed at Krypton that force those types of people into like ghettos and whatnot. And so they like see Cal and they're like, oh look, it's a jackbooted stooge. Let's yell at him. And uh, they seem to have ulterior motives. It's not just a simple razzling th this time. This one is really uh, aggressive. So uh, they engage Cal, they scream free, free Krypton at him. And uh, and also your, your article was due two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he doesn't work for the, for the report. Oh really? He doesn't work for like the Kryptonian equivalent of no, the Daily Planet. No, I meant, Planet. you know, from the, from the Daily Planet. Like, oh, you yeah. know, like oh, reality no. seeping no. in and they're like... <laughs> yeah, he's like, what? What? Yeah. That's a weird one. Right, he just keeps hearing his phone ringing. And it's, like, <laughs> it's on every radio station. Uh, we will see a little bit of a glimpse of reality when we cut to Lois meeting with Perry being like, I don't know where the hell he hey, is. Hey, Ben, if we were to cut to reality, what might we say we were doing? It's weird. I feel like we'd... Snap back to reality. <laughs> oh, there was gravity. Oh, perhaps gravity. <laughs> These bikes have like a like absolute Akira feel, but like they also make you think of Tron. Of course they do, because yeah, that's they the look like other bikes. movie that looks awesome with future bikes. It's hard to achieve, you know, and, and it's expensive, and it's a it's a really complicated, uh, uninsurable stunt to, a, to to pull off, I you know. I feel like if motorcycles look more like this, I would want to ride More one. people would like, ride I'm them. I'm not like that person. I would definitely hurt myself, but if they look like that, I'd be like, well. The only time I've ever wanted to ride a motorcycle in my life is watching Tron Legacy. I mean, it's it looks- the only time. You got those freaking cool lines coming out from the back the, of it. Yeah. Well, and the like- The bikes look great. And I know I'm in a video game. Yeah, you're like, safe. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm in Look, like, if I'm there, I'm the protagonist, I'm gonna win. <laughs> yes, and I'm if I'm gonna lose, I'm still gonna be alive. Right, I will fly off it and then somehow manage to just like slow my, my momentum as I'm hitting the ground and just slide across <laughs> that beautiful, perfect surface. I'm imagining Ben in the Tron situation when they send him up to the games and Ben yeah. would be like, excuse me, can you send me back down to the room with the four ladies? Yeah, I wasn't done there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all of these cool games we have for you. I have cool games I'd like to play down there. Yeah, Thank that you. is like, we, we, we've passed that in 1987. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a child. <laughs> <laughs> I want the games downstairs. <laughs> I know you play those games. <laughs> Why do they look like this? <laughs> so uh, Cal gets attacked. You know, they do the whole like speeder bike thing. Like, sure, you, yeah, you know, yeah. And uh, he's like, what do you they, want? They like, leave light trails behind themselves so that, you know. They do leave light trails, but only because those bikes are glowing. Right, because they look cool. Yeah, because they look Not awesome. because he'll run into a wall because you're playing Snake. Oh, uh, that's correct. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he's just like, why are you attacking me? Like, I'm nobody. And the. Uh, well, I saw you were smoking hot wine. I want her. <laughs> you yeah. should not have her. This happens to him like 10 <laughs> times a day. Every freaking day. <laughs> Every day with this. Someone tries to off me and steal my wife. Uh, Kryptonian law. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you keep what you kill. <laughs> you keep what you fuck. What? So, that's better than you fuck what you kill. That's terrible. You no, know what? That's the necromonger way. That's necrophilia way. Yeah, that's. Welcome to the show, Tiffany. Yeah, this is the show. Can I go? Can no. I go to the room with the four ladies? <laughs> no. Oh. No. What? <laughs> or, ah, let's see where this goes. Yeah. <laughs> so Cal's like, what do you want from me? I'm nobody. I'm just like the lowest level guy. Like this never happens to me. The, the lowest? Oh. Uh, <laughs> so the guy's like, freedom. <laughs> That's what we want, meh. It's what very ridiculous. Uh, Connor McLeod? <laughs> Connor McLeod. Wait, what is he gonna do? I have no ability. I mean, I know why they're doing it, but like for the purposes of their narrative, mm -hmm. that like they should be doing it, it's like, I can't, I literally, that's like going to the Wendy's and yelling at the cashier because your favorite right, burger I can't help doesn't you. exist anymore. Well, no, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting freedom by attacking one fascist overlord at a time. Or, so, or it's like yelling at the ice cream man because good humor, just continue the toasted almond, which, which I absolutely will be doing. <laughs> so Superman notices that the guy who's attacking him has foot brakes, oh. as opposed to Cal, who's like the, the you know the latest model motorcycle. So he just steps over and just hits him for him, and uh, that sends the dude flying. And uh, the dude goes flying up into the sky, and 
doesn't what? come back down. It crashes into something, and then suddenly there's a beam of yellow light that hits Superman. And as he is still riding, he's engaged by more members of the biker gang, and he looks at them, and his eyes glow red because he's absorbed. Because the, the, the skies are red, mm -hmm. you know, to simulate the uh, Kryptonian red, uh, red sun. sun. But sending that, you know, that motorcycle up there somehow, it must have broken something. Wow, was, that motorcycle went real high. Yeah. Well, we are in the bottle city of Kandor. I was going to ask if we were in the bottle city of Kandor. <laughs> yeah. So he, he... He cracked the glass. Uh-oh. They're all going to get out. No. Yeah, they will. They can't fly. It, ah! They will if they go into that beam. Well, but yeah, but the beam is, it's just convenient because there's still clouds and stuff. Like it's it, its only a momentary flash that he gets hit the, with this radiation or the solar radiation. So Cal is, you know, nervous and upset and he doesn't really know what the, <laughs> the laser what the whole, shot out of my eyes. But, I'd be upset. Yeah, exactly. Well, and blasts and also a couple delighted. of the other biker's bikes and blasts a couple of the biker's bikes and like they send them flying. They go flying into like a building nearby, like a residential neighborhood, uh, which is to say his neighborhood because he was just going home in the first place. Can you Oh, he was going home? Yeah, he was like, screw this, I'm going home. I was gonna say, does he, can you call out for that? Right. Home. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I have laser eyes. Yeah. Can I, can I call out? <laughs> you may be excused. You may be excused. <laughs> uh, so they saw him shoot them with laser eyes and like, screw this, I'm going home. Literally, there's a moment actually later where one of the characters goes, screw you guys, I'm going home. And I'm like, <laughs> what year was this? 2004? Yeah, that, that's, yep. that seems good. Okay. I watched South Park too, Joe. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but people are just like, what the hell just happened? Only a couple of those biker guys saw Cal blast heat vision. So they just assumed that, like, it was a attack gone wrong mm. and that something, you know, mm. crazy happened. Or some swamp gas. Right. Uh, reflected off of a weather balloon or something. But, uh, yeah, so the... Uh, <clears throat> oh, so the like ringleader of the gang is Look at that cake. Oh my, what? <laughs> so the ringleader gets a call from the guys, like his, his, his plucky band of colorful and distinctive and named alien friends who have names like, oh and thankfully there's an index in the beginning that oh. will introduce you to them. Oh. Uh, there's, there's the main guy, Basquat. Oh, I thought that was Prius. No, Prius is the... Uh, is Shitty Toyota. Yeah, we'll get into him later. But uh, there's Basquat, who's their ringleader. There's Shire. There's Mammoth. And there's Jigsaw. Would you like to play a game? Yeah, he looks like a transition or something. It's just like, okay. So, of course, this doesn't happen like every day in Kandor. Okay, that makes Good. sense. I'm Good, I'm glad it does. Right, so immediately the Gestapo is dispatched. And it's just this team of, like, upper-level police force mm -hmm. led by Prius, uh, who is their like, you know, chief or whatever. Okay. Uh, they all of course wear the crest of the House of L because yeah. Jor-El saved them all and it's been a long time and oh. you know. So like Doesn't that's not really his house anymore no, as much it, it's just a symbol of hope. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, it's been taken over. Yes, it's been co-opted by the like fascist government that has taken hold in Kandor. Mm. And uh, so yeah, Prius is there and he's just like, He's already like a dick. You know, you could tell like he's worried about, he's he's there because his job is to be a policeman, but he talks down to everyone cuz who is citizens because like they're not as important as he is. Mm. And of course like I've already established that like this is a xenophobic society. These Kryptonians are very much like only about being Kryptonian. If you were an alien in Kandor when it was bottled, now you are like a second, second class. class citizen, you're, yeah. you're just, dis you're just that's gotta suck. Yeah, well, they don't know. See, that's the thing is that in this version of Candor, a we're watching it from the perspective of Kal El, who thinks that it's not divorced from Krypton, mm -hmm. they just haven't left the city yet, uh, and b that it is sometime in the like far future, like so, let's say a hundred years in the future from when the city had been bottled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or when Superman was guarding it 100 years ago. And so in that time, there has not been a Superman, there has not been a protector. And so this idea of like a mythic Kryptonian that like lorded over us, that was like b larger than life, that was a god, you know, that that's become a, a more of a religion. But I was thinking like, if like, at least if you're 
part of the bottle city. That sucks, right? Yes. But you're with people you know. Exactly. But if you're an alien from someplace else, right? you got shoved I'm not in supposed there. to be here. Like, I, I can't go home. No, but like you lived here. You know, it's like. Any I was vacationing on crypto. Yeah, what summering you on that? Cri- I was summering in Canada. I was here for a business meeting. Right, exactly. Well, now you're here forever. Great. And you actually, understand they double booked my flight. Yeah. I should have been out of here. <laughs> uh, so Prius asks Cal, like, how he's doing, if he's hurt. And Cal realizes, like, oh my God, like, I'm not. Like, I was in that horrible wreckage and, like, I'm fine. And I also kind of caused it, but I'm not going to tell anybody that. But uh, yeah, so Cal and Lila take a walk, but he's trying to tell her, like, I should, get, I should give myself up to the authorities because, like, I, I don't know what's going on with me, but I'm clearly a danger. I might be an alien, like you, Lila. Yeah. A no. dirty alien. Yeah, he, he's cool with her being an alien, obviously, since he married her, but also, like, we don't really talk about what kind of alien she is, and we never really see her interact with anybody outside of the house. Mm. Uh, and, that, and that's for design. Uh, also, speaking She's of design... Foxian. Speaking of design, uh, Kelly and company wanted to, like, look... The idea was that nobody's really done anything interesting with Candor. You know, okay. Post crisis, and everybody yeah. forgets about Candor. Yeah, we never get stories in there. Exactly. How does everybody for- I never forget about Candor. I know, but like, you. Here's the thing, a lot of people did. Like oh, okay. post crisis, Candor was never like a really big important mm, thing. Okay. It was like a trophy that they kept in the Fortress of Solitude. Like nobody thought to capitalize it on too much. Mm. I mean, the it's a sad story. Yeah. Well, in this story, in this time frame, I remember like one of the biggest plot points was in Frank Miller's sequel to The Dark Knight, where he was like, Candor is a huge plot point for right. me. Right. And I remember that was kind of like a, that was like a big Candor story for, for a lot of people. And it there weren't a lot of other stories like it. Uh, and Well, they came out kind of angry. Well, that in, in that one, yes. Uh, <laughs> and, and in the future, yeah, when they finally go like, oh, we're going to do something with Candor, and it's going to be big. In this one, it was kind of like, let's do something with Candor. And the, that's the whole theme for Joe Kelly is like, everybody forgets about Candor. Mm. And so we're going to see that paid off later on. But the idea of, you know, it's this bottle city. You know, you bump into it, and they have earthquakes and shit. Like, if you dropped it, you've committed oh, genocide like yeah, just, yeah, yeah. but he also was like ooh and now that we're like looking at it let's play with it like maybe it's an island you know okay. so <laughs> so it's it's impossible looking okay. but it's also exactly the kind of thing that the Aspen crew is down to draw right it's right. just like well it's it doesn't need to have any grounding whatsoever I mean just look at other human beings that we're drawing sure. uh, so you know but like it's an island right but it's like it's an island but it's divorced from everything where's the water coming from like who cares it's Kryptonian so. It is gorgeous. Like, that idea of what it oh, is. Oh, I know. I love it. And it's just kind of like, we don't really see that candor really anymore. Mm. Uh, but it was a fun opportunity for them to just really explore and play with it because nobody else was bothering to do mm-hmm. it. Um, so Cal's in his insane Jetsonian apartment and uh, looking out the window and just, you know, still... It's funny, you know, he's, he's with Lila, he works within the system, he's trying to do good. Now suddenly, if I'm hit by random light beams, I'm super and awesome. But still, uh, you know, I uh, feel like something's feel like missing. I'm not living up to my full potential. Exactly. You know? And she's like, shut up. Uh, so then uh, the biker gang shows up. They just smash the windows. And they're just like, blah, we followed you home. Yeah, it's all right. And they're like, ah, and he's like, Lila, no. And then... Uh, the sun shines in, and he just blasts through the window, and the next thing he knows, he's floating in the sky. Right, okay. Oh, how do I do this? He's pretty good at it, because it's muscle memory for him, you know? He doesn't know that he's... Well, because he rides a bike, he knows the muscles. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so, uh, everyone sees him, and they're like, uh, I didn't sign up for flying dudes. Doesn't Prius and his, uh, band of, you know, jackbooted thugs also fly? They do, they have hover belts. They have, okay. they have anti-grav belts, okay. which is the thing. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're all just like, whoa, look at him go. And then Basquat is like, you idiots! They all fly! <laughs> <laughs> they all got swords! <laughs> so, <Yay. laughs> so Superman is like floating up there and he's like, screw these guys. So he just fires himself down there and engages and just grabs Basquat, Basquat like grabs onto him. He's like, all right, you've got me now. Oh no, what do you want? Like, what is this all about? And he says a bunch of like freedom fighter nonsense, you know, but we're not gonna be intimidated by you, blah, 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 blah. Down with the system. Yeah, so they they, they touch down 
on the lawn next to the house. The family comes outside. That's when you're like, oh my God, this is just, this is just Jor-El and Lara and uh-huh. Clark. Like, all right, what's going on here? Is this whole thing a goddamn dream? Uh, but he's just like, hey, get out of here. It's, it's dangerous. And then uh, Basquiat is like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill all of them. I'm going to kill them and your wife. And how does that make you feel? And he screams at them to leave them alone. But I guess he screams at them so coldly that freeze breath blasts out and he freezes the family to death. What? Like, they just, they're frozen solid. Almost as if they're crystalline sculptures. <laughs> yeah, they are kind of like that. Uh, but they're frozen. It's actually a beautiful sequence of seeing them because like the, the, the youngest like pokes at it and he's frozen like that. So it's like the point in which the like freeze starts is at his index finger. So it like, it just kind of cones out Aww. over them. And it's just it's sad because it's like innocent, yeah. you know? And part of him isn't frozen. So you're like, oh God. Uh, but yeah, so. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and uh, of course, Cal is uh, beside himself. He tries to like use heat vision, but he's kind of like tapped out because you know he only got that single beam from earlier in the story. Right. And so he just like smashes his hands against the glass trying to like break it open to free them and bloodies his hands doing it because he's, he's, he's frozen them to death, like they're dead. And he's killed this like beautiful family and he just doesn't know what to do. Right. And so. Uh, well, you're gonna get arrested. Well, he doesn't, he runs away and uh, bandages up his hands and eyes because he's afraid of opening them. Uh, and so he uh, goes off into like the ghetto and hides himself there. Lila finds him uh, because of course, uh, she has other powers that she's not sharing with Cal, but uh, she discovers him and he's like, please Lila, stay away from me. Like, I don't want to look at you or I'll, I'll kill you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, and I don't love the image of Superman, like just rediscovering his powers, but not knowing what they are or that he's Superman and how he would react. Uh-huh. And how he immediately thinks of others, but also like that he's just like, get away from me, like I'm too strong. There's a beautiful moment in the Justice League animated series where Superman has a dream. And I believe it's when Dr. Destiny takes over the Justice League and it's a fantastic episode. But uh, he, uh, Superman's dream is that he, his powers get away from him. And so, like, every time that he uses his powers, he gets bigger and more monstrous. Mm-hmm. And, like, his, his eye beams are killing people. And then Jimmy comes over and he's like, hey, Superman, I'm your best pal. He's like, Jimmy, my friend. And he hugs him to death. And it's just like, oh, like, all of this stuff is it's really cool. So anytime you get to depict <sighs> Superman and his, like, you know, fear of himself, it's yeah. kind of fun to see. And uh, I, I love the image of, like, the rain and him just, you know, bandaged. You know, he's not in pain, but, you know, he's just trying to protect everybody else. And uh, he's just like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what my body's gonna do next. Mm-hmm. Which is also a great metaphor for adolescence. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, but she peels the bandages off of him and he's like, no, please, I'm a monster. Like, what did I do to deserve this? Because of course he's had like a, nothing but a life of luxury and he's been a, been a one percenter forever. So like, why would he ever uh, think that he deserved any uh, wrongdoing to himself? Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> so she cradles him and she asks him to pray with him. And he says, I can't. <laughs> Because I don't think there's anybody listening and it pans out and that's the big reveal that like, oh, they're on Candor. Right. Now, of course, it's like a, a, a Aspen depicted Candor. Yeah. So it's like, you know, the, the, the Silver Age Candor is like, there's a dome, there's a city, you could see it. <laughs> in this one, it's like, it's in some cockamamie futuristic hourglass with like an atmosphere and crap. But at least we see Kellex and we're like, oh, okay, I can calculate myself. I know, I think I know what I'm looking at here. I think if I were reading this in 2004, I'd be like, is this a world? Are we in another <laughs> reality? Is this the multiverse? What are we doing? Right. It's like, it's just candor, you moron. That's a bottle. I think that's, that's the lava lamp of Krypton. <laughs> but uh, but Kellex, I get. He's monitoring it. Sure. Kellex! Kellex, you didn't hear me! Kellex! Well, he doesn't know. Remember, he doesn't know to yell for Kellex. Uh, but thankfully, uh, eventually he, of course, gets his bearings. But then, anyway, so uh, Prius and his band of fascists go to investigate the killing of this, you know, suburban family. And he's just like, oh, I don't know what to do. Like, I, I, I don't know what, what, what monstrous alien force did this to you, but don't, re- rest assured, young boy. We will wipe them off the face of Kandor. Exactly, you will be avenged. Well, it's funny is, none of them say Kandor. They all say Krypton. They're all referring to Krypton. Oh. And we'll talk about why that is. Okay. When the, when the, you know, when the heel turn takes place, of course, Joe Kelly book. But uh, yeah, he's just like, you will buy Grapthar's hammer. <laughs> and uh, so we see Perry and Lois and they're talking and she's just like, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm worried. I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know where he is. He's been gone for two weeks. I didn't realize that was Perry. I thought it was some dude with arm tattoos. Yeah, no, that's hair. Oh. It's badly drawn hair. <laughs> 
an unfortunate amount of hair. Uh, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think it's just the right amount of hair. Yeah. <laughs> Never does Cal fall on the side of the fascists. Like, right. he works for them, but he's not like, yeah, let's get those aliens. Let's, like, punch a couple, you know, for fun. You know, he's just like, he does We never actually see him on the job because technically he hasn't really been on the job that long. Right. Uh, but, yeah, he never draws that connection. Uh, meanwhile, speaking of aliens, we see the Bugger Gang, and they're all talking about how they were hired by someone to razzle Cal. This whole thing was orchestrated by, by an evil or at least sinister uh, third party. Okay. I was yeah. going to say, it looked like they were a team from Final Fantasy. They sure do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Here are these nice looking people and one like goblin monster. Yeah. He's the dwarf. He's the cute and funny one. Like he's the one who says the pop culture references. But uh, so... I'm the frog. Yes. So Lila brings Cal to like a convenient expository locale mm -hmm. uh, and they're talking about, you know, his fears and his concerns and how she's like, you have to have faith. You have to have faith in God. God will protect us. And he's like, I don't know where, I, like, where, first of all, you're getting kind of gaudy on me, you know, where, where this is coming from. But uh, he's just like, if I could, like, she, she's like, if I could, I would take your pain away from you. I would take all that away from you. And he's like, she goes, would you let me do that? And he's like, if I knew you could, I would. She's like, that's all I needed to hear. And then proceeds to grab his face and dig her hands through his head and into his body. And clearly it's like, it looks like she's phasing, but really it's like in his mind. Right. Um, and so. Yeah, but he got permission. Or I'm sorry, she got permission. That's right. She's like a so vampire. It's like a psychic vampire. Yeah, kind of. Or the uh, fae. Oh. So the shoe's in the other foot. Oh no. Lila is you know, a sinister force in the story. Who'd have thought that? And no, uh, digs into his head <laughs> while Prius like decides to, uh, you know, begin his holy quest to get revenge on this family he's never met before. I am the paladin of this story. Right, but he's like, whatever the cost for Kandor. Finally, we're seeing him reference uh, Kandor. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's like, oh. And it's because- We didn't want to tip you off we were in Kandor. Yes, but we already knew because we did the big reveal. Yeah. And now that we have done that reveal, we can start saying Kandor yeah. again. But Lila, put the suggestion in Cal's head to replace the word Kandor with Krypton. So every time he heard Kandor, he heard Krypton instead, so it wouldn't set him off and be like, Kandor? Oh. Oh, I know where I am. Oh, this is fake. So we kept hearing his version of it. Yeah. And now that we're not around them, yes. when Prius says it, it's Kandor. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, plus, we've revealed that Lila is like, using him and infecting his mind so like the jig is up so we can we can drop all pretenses mm -hmm. she's not bad she's just drawn that way <laughs> <laughs> yeah in more ways than one uh so she uh she, she monologues at him about how living on candor we believed in god above us this all-powerful being that stood above us and took care of us and now that I'm in your mind, I can see who you are and where you're from, because I know that you are God. I know you're the God who, pr who promised to protect us. Hence Godfall. That's right. So she joins into his mind and sees, you know, Superman and Lois and all the stuff about like how he comes from this place that the Kandorians believe is heaven. It's like above them. Right. It's this, this utopia where, where they get to fly and have superpowers. Exactly. And like God himself lives there. So it must be awesome, right? And he wears the crest of L. And they use that. That's like their cross. But like it was a thing before. It, it was a thing. But okay. So for Cal, the crest is in deference to Jor-El. For the Kandorians, which were actually with and on, that crest is a religious symbol that represents the Their god. oppressor. Well, no, it's the god who abandoned them. And it gets kind of like, what? But to, but to, they knew Jor-El. Okay, so here, no. What? So because of Superman's previous adventure that we barely reference in this story, Superman goes through time dilation. And so for what felt like, or what was on Earth two weeks, okay was actually a hundred years on Kandor. So they experienced time differently? 
they did only because time did screw around. Kellex explains it later in like expository dialogue where he where he like runs down that like there were like chronal shifts and Kandor has like an internal chronometer that they built in the, the Bottle City that like is supposed to compensate and when it did, it essentially advanced time within the the the, the, the bottle. So for what was two weeks for Superman was 100 years within the Bottle City. But that wouldn't erase their like knowledge of the no, but it, no, but it did change everything. Like it, because Superman was no longer there to care for them for a hundred years. But because they remembered that Superman did care for them for a hundred years, they don't even remember who Superman really what, is. What do you mean care for them? It's not like he gives them fish flakes or something. Yeah, no, but he's supposed to watch them. Like if things get messed up, he's supposed to check in. Like there is actually like a like a thing that like goes off. Where it's like, oh, the the red light's flashing on Candor. I should go down there yeah, and check it out. Yeah, better tap on the glass and tell them to knock hey, it off. knock it off. Quit being fascists. <laughs> <laughs> Get along with each other. No, he has to go down there. There's like a, a there's a portal. That, that, but what that, would it matter if he went down there? He's not gonna be Superman down there. Well, uh, he, he okay. So here's the he thing. He does keep his powers. He can for keep a his little powers while. for a little while, so he can like keep the peace. But if he, the longer he's there, the more his powers go away. Uh, also, equally, if Kandorians leave, they get sick and die, and that's just a plot device that's built into the story, so that Kandorians don't leave, which of course they get rid of in the like war that happens later on in DC is, continuity. Is it like one of those parent lies where it's like, no. hey, if you go over to the other <laughs> side of the fence, you die. That's right, like, there's poison gas over there. Yeah, they're like, you you told me I would die. Yeah. It was to keep you safe. Yeah, exactly. No, no, they really do though. You, you lied to me. Yeah, no, they really do get sick though. Like it, it's it's not to keep the peace. It's. There's, there's a real plot reason as to why they Yeah, get I can see why there's freaking like crypt, uh, kryptonite gas around the place. Wait, why, a, does it look, a, why does it look like that there? Right, well, uh, okay. So in part, I think because we're seeing what Kandor looked like when Cal last saw it. Like it hasn't been so all the, built up and the changed. the bottle changed too? Like Kellex was like, it's time to think to switch it up a little well, bit for their, for their increased jump in time. I better make it look all future -y. We yeah. don't even get into it. He unlocked a, a new skin for it. I mean, <laughs> maybe I don't it really changed. want it, but I'm going to put it on. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> it's not like the Kandorians even like really changed the dome. They don't even know they're in a dome because it's in a hundred years and Superman hasn't been in there to check on them. So like it's been generations of people who have like been told, you know, can you imagine like, you know, 10 generations of people going like, uh, we live in a secret bottle, and actually we're divorced from all of reality. It's like, it's sure. been a hundred years. That's like three generations tops. All right, well, you know. Which, then I guess some of these aliens are fairly long-lived? Some of them are, but most of them are just like, these are just next generations of people. Like, they, these are people who don't even remember that there was a Superman. It's, yeah, like the, the aliens that lived there yeah. alongside the Kryptonians, like they interbred and they okay. like, yeah, some of them must have been longer lived because otherwise it would be a more homogenous society. Yeah. Like, but it isn't and that's not the story we're trying to tell. Right, you. right. But I also want it to be 100 years later though. So okay. like, it, it's it's whatever Joe Kelly and Michael Do Turner want it to okay. be. But the point is the big secret reveal is that like time has passed faster within the bubble and Superman has seemingly abandoned the Kandorians. And so like, you know, some of them have used the like image or memory or like rumor of Superman. Like Prius? Like Prius as a kind of like excuse that's, to be a fascist. That's why they have the gra gravity belt and everything. Yeah, They're like, exactly. we have to fly because that's what Because that's would. what God did. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Lila is one of those aliens. And actually she was like one of the, she's the last of her kind, not unlike Superman, uh, where she was raised by her father who taught her about, you know, God and how he's like just basically like, told her Superman stories, but from the perspective of, I didn't actually know him personally, so let me tell you about like this guy who's who's bigger than the place we live, who could fly and lives in a place with people like himself, you know, all over the, you know, and, they have, and they have beautiful blue skies and shit, you know, like telling her about like heaven and God and stuff. And so she gets all these ideas in her head. And so when Superman was heading back, he was like really at diminished capacity and tired. <laughs> And Lila was so sad and forlorn about like the absence of God in their world that her empathic abilities, which of course she has, uh, that is to say empathic, telepathic, or whatever she needs to have in order for the story to continue. Uh, she, Socio. Yeah, but she drew Superman to her and pulled him into Kandor and then used her abilities to ground him and convince him that he lived there all the time and that they were together. 
Uh, this is so that she could understand God. And when she got into his mind, she realized, like, you're no God and you, you abandoned us. Like, you forgot about us. Just like everybody who reads Superman comics forgot about Candor. So that's like the, that's the big reveal. Yeah, that's kind the, of like point the point finger. of the story. Is that Lila is the avatar of, you know, continuity. Who's like, boo. And that's why she's, of course, like a carryover from the pre-crisis continuity as well. Okay. Uh, and also she's smoking hot because, you know, Michael Turner designed her. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we see, like, kind of the origin of their religion, or rather her belief in him. He always gets a spot in these things. What? Doomsday? <laughs> no. Oh, Plastic Man? Yeah. yeah, people can't avoid drawn Plastic Man. Everybody <laughs> loves drawn Plastic Man. You could imagine, and I kind of love the idea, and of course, like Joe Kelly, you know? I mean, like, but there's also, it's bound, it's balanced out by Michael Turner being like, don't forget those cool, those rad motorcycles. Uh, but, you know, this idea of like, let's look into the mind of what I think is God, but it's actually Superman. And it's like, oh, like, he is pure of heart, and he does want to do the right thing all the time and he has battled literal demons mm -hmm. like in the form of a name like Doomsday which has like a biblical sounding name he is joined by a pantheon of other gods yeah you know like with who, who wield light constructs and who are like and shape money. changers and money <laughs> <laughs> yeah Batman's in there too uh, god of the underworld or whatever and you know he faces foes that are you know titanic and herculean in nature and stuff like that and, and tricksters yeah and mixes spit like as well too <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, if Lila was mixed a spit lick the whole time, I'd be like, gross. <laughs> I, but also, I get it. Like, I get the compulsion to tell that story. Please don't. Uh, but also, he died. And even death could not stop him. Right. And it's like, okay, yeah. And, and you know, God chose a uh, demigoddess to marry, you know, because Lois is like immeasurably beautiful, you know, because of course she is. Mm -hmm. you know? and, only the best for God, you know, and so she is the goddess of truth. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, yeah, exploitative truth, right? But when she realized, like, he was all these things and more, and good, and also forgot about us, fuck God. Like, I could be better than God. So she sought to draw him there, and then steal his powers, go to heaven, and be God. Okay, I mean, that's not that far-fetched. No, exactly. Yeah, but like, you're not like gonna, I could do a better job. You're not going to leave the Bottle City of Kandor and then get Superman-style powers, which means that you're never mm. going to be able to get back into the Fortress of Solitude because you can't pick up the key. Well, she's going to be in the Fortress of Solitude when she leaves Kandor because she'll be... Well, she's not going to go anywhere else then. You're going to stay there. You're just in your own Bottle City there. Yeah, the, the post-crisis thing with the key is kind of like, oh, okay. sometimes they like the key, sometimes they go, that's okay. stupid. Uh, but no, because of her unique physiology and the fact that she's able... The way they explain it is okay. that she links with him. And so, as such, she's able to absorb his powers. She... And the yellow sun gives her Superman powers. But it's not like a power of his no. gives him. It's his physiology. Yes. but So does her... she change her physiology? Seemingly, she links her physiology with his or some part of him and prints onto her. She links her physiology with him all the time. At least every morning and uh, afternoon after breakfast. And um, maybe even after lunch. <laughs> So uh, the point is she's going to get Superman powers. And so she takes them and she's like, oh, wait, Kandor, our goddesses are born, and then leaves. And so she escapes and grows big, and we don't explain why or how, but uh, we do know at least that she hates pants. Yeah. The only she's thing I ready for the beach. She is so ready for the beach. <laughs> but, like, she never goes to it. So she's like, okay, I'm off to Metropolis to become... Like, God, and do what God does. You are gonna get some looks. Oh, she is. After the mind meld, Superman is left on the side of the road, and uh, he bumps into the aliens, you know, the, that are that were hired by her yeah. to, to mess with him. As soon as she said someone hired them, I was like, okay. Oh, it was Lila, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, because I mean, she has no discernible personality. The only character I know the name of other than Prius, who I know did not hire them. Okay, Because <laughs> he's too stupid. Yeah. That was really weird. I was expecting that they were going to be hired to awaken him and be like, hey, you're not who you think you are. Right. You're Superman. Yeah, yeah. They were actually hired by a good person to be like, we're going to razzle him into becoming Superman again. Mm, no, yeah, I, like he nope. needs the enemies to fight. I legitimately was like, okay, it's her. Yeah. Got it. But and, smarter. And literally, like, for the first page, I was like, and we're in Candor. <laughs> Like there was, I mean, yeah, no. I mean, I, mean, I was like, uh, the, the team turns on Basquat, where they're like, "Hey, man, 
we were doing this for the cause, but like, we're, you know, we're not hired guns. Like we don't razzle people for money. Like we're trying to free Candor and save our, save, save our, like our, our, our alien brothers. Yeah, you guys are doing this for the, for, uh, the, for the freedom cause. and the cause. I'm doing this so we can eat. Exactly, yeah, these, these motorcycles need gas. Or do they? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they, they, they have kind of like a, a, you know, an argument that's starting to turn physical. And you know, Cal is like, one of the mentions that we fight for Candor, and he's like, Candor? That's the first time I've heard it. Oh man, I'm Superman. <laughs> <laughs> like it all just starts falling into place. And then Prius shows up and he's like, oh, oh I found the people who murdered that family and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you. Uh, meanwhile, Lila is flying around and she's having a ball. She's like, I'm, I'm flying and it's beautiful and it's blue and blah. And she sees Metropolis. Wow, look at her shoes. Oh yeah. Wow. Right? <laughs> So those books becoming a lot more appealing. What? No. Uh, so, I'm not that. So she arrives. <laughs> so she arrives at Metropolis, and she's just like, "Wow! Like this is this is the place that our God like chose to live." And so she lands on it, and she's like, "It smells horrible here." What a dump. And then this dude, like the scummy dude, is like, "Hey, I like your outfit? How much for it?" I'm thinking, and he whispers something gross in her ear, and he, she just throws him through a window, and she's like, "What? What? What? What the hell's wrong with these people? These aren't gods." There's like a homeless guy who's like, are you Power Girl? So Cal joins up with the Freedom Fighters and run away from Prius. And uh, Cal dictates that they go into one of these like holes. Is he in a sidecar or is he riding his He's own He's in thing? a sidecar. <laughs> so uh, they, they go like underground and uh, he, his, his internal monologue is like, uh, Batman called these rat holes. They're like one time use tunnels underneath the city and there are more than you ever think there are created by the criminal element. Right, but one time use? Yeah. Do they close up after you? No, you, well, you can't, you can't trust them again once you use them because you know that you're using them to escape law enforcement so they find them and then you have to, you have to build a new burrow oh, okay. like rats do. And it's like, so he's using his Batman experience to uh, help uh, facilitate the Freedom mm. Fighters escape and, uh, and he's, he, they're taken to like, you know, the, the wastelands where all these like different aliens and families are living and you know, they're all just yelling at each other. And when I get out of here, trust me, I'm gonna fix that for you. Exactly. I'll tap on the glass a little harder. Right, <laughs> exactly. Well, and, and also he is plagued by the guilt of having been inadvertently a murderer. Mm. Like he killed that family and he's like- But he actually killed that family. But he really did kill that family, or at least so he <laughs> thinks. And so he's like, oh my God. So he thinks. Yeah, but he freeze breath the hell out of those guys. They're dead. And so uh, he proceeds to explain to them that he's Superman, and they're like, Shh, yeah, no, Superman's a god. Like <laughs> Superman was is an ancient religion for this place. Um, it's been a hundred years. What the heck? Listen, it took what 18, 20 years for all of the galaxy to think the Jedi were fake. <laughs> anyway, so she's pissed. She immediately loses the faith. She's like, why did I wear this? She's just smashing things up. <laughs> yeah, why did I dress the best for this? Uh, but she smashes things up and she's like, I beat Kal-El, like I'm his successor. I'm your God, like wait, wait. Oh wait, I'm in the wrong place. I need to go to the Daily Planet. You know, where he hangs out. They'll respect me Olympus, there. Olympus, essentially. Yes. I mean, you could just go to Olympus, actually. Right, yeah, but she doesn't know what that is. Superman doesn't worry about that. <laughs> so she flies off to the, uh, to the Daily Planet. Um, Superman. This is where Lex Luthor's like, hello. Hello, what have we here? I love that idea. Lex is only in here in a flashback. He's we saw like, earlier. okay, I desperately do want to bang Superman, and I can't. Oh no. But I can bang her. Yeah, and that's, 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 that's like the same thing. Here, put this on. <laughs> put on the Superman costume. So, uh, <laughs> Cal explains to the Freedom Fighters, like this is where, there's a secret backdoor entry into the fortress from here that I would use if I got trapped here and had to go on an adventure, which I am in. Thank so, God I built that in. Uh, so I'm gonna go, and if you leave, you'll die, so don't do that. And they're like, screw you, man. Like, we have been fighting for the liberation of Kandor our entire lives. We've lived under like the oppressive rule of Kandorian law for a hundred years. I wanna see what heaven's like. And he's like, okay, you're gonna die because you're gonna get sick, but I'll, I'll try to make it quick. So they all leave. Also, ooh, heaven is a place on earth. That's right. So they all go through the portal and they end up back at the fortress and Kellogg's like, hey, sorry, yeah, that was my B. <laughs> I, the whole time vortex thing, ah, we'll, we'll get it right on the next try. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, there's a there's a half naked chick in the metropolis. She's wrecking things up. I don't know why Kellex is sassy in this book, but uh, let's move on. But also, also, uh, uh, you brought friends. Yeah, oh, I, I didn't. I only made lemonade for one. So, uh, Lila meets up with Lois, and of course, like you know, it's the Battle of the Elves. Uh, now we need Lana and Lex to show up, and Lemuri from the ocean, and then we got ourselves a party. And Lobo. Yeah. Oh, then Lobo shows oh, up. Oh yeah. Lobo would be a, a welcome addition to the story because I mean <laughs> we've already got motorcycles. Why not a space hog that flies in? He's like, hey there, sugar cakes. What's going on? <laughs> and then just, just punches him into the sky, into the stars. Yeah. He's like, I think I'm in love. <laughs> exactly. And then he's just like wants her like for his entire life. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a story there. We'll talk about that. Why, by, why that is later. So she faces Lois, and she's like, "Oh, you are the demigoddess that he chose." And she's like, "Where's Superman?" And she goes, "God is dead." And you're like, "Oh no, bum bum bum. Who cares?" We so, all know he's not. Yeah. So so Superman, yeah, but Lois doesn't. She doesn't. So Superman puts on his Superman costume, and now it's a Superman book. Yay! And uh, so he and the uh, and, and all of his rowdy friends they brought their motorcycles. They, yeah, they brought their bikes. <laughs> they sure did. I'm of not going. They did. I'm not going to heaven without my bike. The book exists because I want to see motorcycles. Cal, do you want one too? No, I don't. I don't need one. As you can see, fly. <laughs> oh, this okay. is a lot better. We. Why aren't they dead? It, it takes a while. You're just not supposed to be there too long. Plus, their, their bikes are really fast. It takes a while? Yeah, you, you get sick. Like, you get, like, sick from breathing in the, the air and it being exposed to the atmosphere. That's the, that, at least that's the conceit of the story. But that means you could vacation for a little while on Earth. Is that for, like, ten minutes? Yeah, Lila, Brainiac? Yeah, Lila faces Brainiac. But I don't think it's really Brainiac because Brainiac was in the previous story and Brainiac should not be thrown away like this. Uh, but also because villains will show up later and they're, like, psychic manifests that Lila conjures to attack Kal-El and, and his friends. Mm, okay. uh, and so, yeah, she, like, she destroys uh, Brainiac, rips his head off, and uh, Superman is just like, hey, like, you know, knock it off, Lila. Like, look... You got the wrong idea about me and about this and about like everything, you know. Plus, you violated my mind and my body. Like, but I'm willing well, to forgive. Like, whoa, whoa, what? Uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> Super speedy just leaves her at the fortress. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm gonna go back in time five minutes and not. Say <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but he, but he, he he speaks to her, you know, familiarly, and she says she calls him Cal, and Lois is like, who is this? <laughs> who is who, who, who is this person who speaks to you as though they know you well what, what, what is this all about you want to uh, shed some light on that yeah no I, I don't. really don't <laughs> and I won't so uh, she tells him her like sad backstory about everything I told you about mm-hmm. and uh, when, yeah when she finds out that God is just like some lame ass she orchestrates all this like crap to bring him low and then steal his powers and then supplant him. Oh, but she does uh, see some of his origin. Oh, yeah. She just skips the part where a kind couple. Yeah, she skips, like, why he's a good person. Right. Uh, but also, she managed to uh, facilitate the construction of a fake family that looked like the family that he had. And so, uh, those those people he murdered, they're not real. Oh, they're like constructs. They were like robots or something. It doesn't really get it. They, they don't go into it. It's just that they're fake. Now maybe they're like psychic constructs the way that like Brainiac and Doomsday are later. Okay. Yeah, she just uh, brings them about. They, they're they willed into being, right. but they're not real. Yeah, but Superman's like, oh, I'm not a murderer, yay. Oh, that's so much better. I'm about to be though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so she conjures like Parasite, Brainiac, and Doomsday and stuff, and they uh, Doomsday takes a swing at Superman, and you know it would be very powerful if she had sway over him. But because he re- he realizes he's not a murderer, like that was the that was the weakness that she exploited in him. Right. And so now that that's gone, Doomsday crashes like waves on the shore of Superman's back, and so uh, that's done. And she's just like, okay. <laughs> so he's like, okay, you can't beat me. He just walks up to her. He's just like, hey, like, listen. And he just tries to explain to her like that he's a person who's capable of mistakes, and he committed one by oh no. ignoring Candor. Yeah, and his friends are all starting to die, <laughs> like real fast. Yeah, that went from we're having a good time on our motorcycles to um. Yeah, put me back in the bottle. It's please. the exposure. Yeah. Are they just gonna be like, I'd rather die free than live in the bottle city? Of no, Canada? they would much rather live. <sighs> okay. So they they leave. No, good, good for you. <laughs> yeah. It's the uh, right choice, but like, I kind of figured one of them would be like, no. Yeah. I'm going out like I want to and just in a blaze of glory. <laughs> yes! No, none of that happens. Uh, but then Prius frees himself from his, uh, sh- you know, 
Kandorian prison himself. Oh, great. Oh, sorry. Now everybody what? knows about the well, back door. because he followed them. So yeah, he found the back door. Boom, here he is. And uh, because Prius... That seems like an actual problem. Ke- Kellex is supposed to have, like, a rain on this shit. Right? Like, like Lila's oh, a problem... Oh, back in with you. Yeah. Lila, You're not done yet. Lila's <laughs> an issue because it's like she's just... She's been misled. Her mm-hmm. people have been mistreated. Like, I, you know, we can we can probably talk that down a little bit. This, this is a problem. This, this is, is a guy who's like... But I, bas- I basically am a god. Oh, yeah, no, this guy is a problem. We don't need, like, Nazi Superman yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, I already have a power complex. Yes, and now I have Superman powers. F. So he immediately attacks Superman, and, uh, you know, he's like, this place is impure, and it's full of different people, and, like, you murdered a family. And, and they're not nearly as powerful as I am. Right, so I'm, I'm, I'm in charge now, and he's like, no, they were constructs! You don't exactly. understand! Well, he tries to explain to them. He's like, there's no way. Like, there's no, there's no time. He just, oh, yeah. He says, like, I didn't kill anybody, but, like, you will if you don't stop screwing around. And he's like, ah. <laughs> this dude has like all the muscles plus some extra ones. Well, don't forget, he's also wearing, like this is a, this is a, this is a power armor yeah, thing yeah, he's wearing. Do you think he asked them to construct it with like. With muscle enhancements or like yes. extra bumps? Look yeah. at this guy. Yes, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, he asked for that. Yeah, no. Uh, also, the armor protects him from the Kryptonian sickness that he would normally be afflicted Oh, by. wait, so these other guys are going to die. He's not going to get them back faster. Well, he I needs to get them back faster. Yeah, yeah, gotta, yeah. you got to finish up this fight. But, but we also see that, like, because Prius is not, like, you know, he's not quite the same, the, the yellow sun gives him, like, slightly different modifications of his powers. Like, instead of red heat vision, he gets black heat vision. So he, to, like, to show that he's evil. Uh, yeah. Well, and it's kind of dope looking. It's just kind of like, Why? And they're like, we didn't hire Aspen f- for why, okay? We, we hired Aspen to see rad motorcycles, uh, hot babes, and black heat vision. <laughs> we didn't a- hire Aspen for why, we hired them for wow. Yes, that is, ex- I mean, yes. And we hired Joe Kelly to work with them to rein them into a story that could be at least slightly cohesive. And Just Joe like, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yes. that sounds awesome. That's great, okay, uh, hang on. Yeah. Oh. Okay, there we go. I got it on the page. There. All right, we got it. Whew. But he is also co-writing with Michael Turner, who's like, wouldn't it be Brad if his heat vision was black? He's I mean, like, who knows sure. what, what Turner's... Shut up, Michael! No, he's cool. I, I, I trust his decisions. He he draws some rad stuff and writes this story with Joe Kelly. Uh, it burns. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, he's he's attacking like regular people, and Superman, of course, like throws himself into the line of fire, and uh, Lila sees that, and she's like, "Oh, that's what Superman's all about." Because every Superman story that's worth their salt is usually about like people getting the Christmas spirit about Superman. Uh, but <laughs> oh, and also like he's humble enough where the things that he thinks about, he's not like. Look at how great I am. He'd be like, look at all these times I failed. Yeah, exactly. I gotta be better. That's right. That's why she like falters in his in her belief in him because all she sees is like what made him and his like insecurities. That's a good point. So uh, you know his rowdy friends like kick into gear and try to help out. They attack uh, Prius. Prius, of course, makes mincemeat out of all of them. They even, he even kills one of them, uh, one of the young ladies in the team. Mm-hmm. And I think the only woman on their team. The cheesecake. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. The other one with the badonga on the trunk. <laughs> uh, so Lila and Prius like face off for a minute, and he's like explaining, like you know that she's the worst of the worst because like her kind were like empathic, and they you know these are the powers that they displayed were an affront on Candor and our ideologies and stuff like that. It's why like their their kind were exterminated because like because they because they pose the biggest threat. It doesn't matter if you're like a little frog guy who can fit in a sidecar. That's not really a problem. I'm sorry. But exterminated? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. You know, her father died of unnatural causes. Like it's just it's a problem. And also, we've never seen anyone like Lila before, nor will we ever see her race ever again in DC Comics mm. from 2004 until 2023. Uh She's a problem. Which means... Which means that there will be... Lila will return within the next year. Because Lila has never returned since the story. Uh, Oh, so Lila grabs Prius and proceeds to, like, manipulate him or use his hate and infuse her shame and tries to, like... Get him to understand Superman mm-hmm. by, you know, imprinting some part of her into him. Uh, that fails, and uh, he goes to kill her and forces her to use her powers to kind of, like, change the scenery 
to be uh, what the world is through Prius' eyes or what he w will be when he is, you know, uh, uh, realized. Right. And it's just a wasteland. It's all messed up. Right. And everything's destroyed. And Superman is in, you know, shackles. And oh, then, and it's all dark. Yeah. And Superman frees himself and then and, and explains to Lila that, like, everyone has a choice between good and bad. And to make choices that, like, define who you are. And so while Prius is grabbing her and using her to, like, project this reality, Superman grabs her hand. And so we see this kind of, like, fun split between her eyes okay. of, like, the good and the bad. And it's the first time that she realizes that she does have a choice between, like, you know, giving in to her, you know, crisis of faith or to believe in something bigger and, and greater. Like, it's it's easy to believe in Superman when, like, there was a guy who was named Superman who was like, hi, I'm, I'm God. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 you know... Not. Yeah, harder when he was gone for 100 years. Exactly. So uh, the, the the two of their ideologies uh, flow through her, and uh, she casts a huge explosion, uh, not unlike uh, one of the climactic sequences in Akira, when just a huge ball of energy blasts uh, through the city. The only difference is the city itself is destroyed. Spoilers for Akira. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So in this, this is like a weird, like, empathic three-way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, Prius and she trying... explodes with light. She does, indeed. Uh, she bathes them all in light. Uh, and Superman and Prius are yelling at each other. Prius is like, she's going to destroy everything. Like, she's a filthy alien. You know, her her powers are too, you know, unruly. And, like, she, she, can't, she, she can't be trusted. And uh, he's... She sapped you. Right. Prisana, I tell you this. Here, you're the alien. Exactly. <laughs> he says, no, she won't because I have faith in her. And so uh, his belief in her... I was like, excuse me? Uh, no. No, they're up there. She can't <laughs> no. hear. And so uh, that casts Prius out. He just blasts someplace else. He's gone. And uh, he says, uh, now, I can't promise you heaven, but I'll do my best to make things right. And she says, some things can't be made right, and I am one of them. Goodbye. And she leaves, never to be used in Does another comic book ever again. Does she have his power still? Yeah. Oh, oh. So we could get a smoking hot Superman. <laughs> Not to say we don't have one already, because, you know, Travis Caldwell draws a, uh, a beefcakey Superman. He is. But, uh, yeah, we could get the return of Lila at any time in the next 20 years. But uh, I'll tell you who does come back. Prius. Of course he does. When? Uh, almost immediately. And it's disappointing. He is what is known as a diminishing returns. Uh, Prius goes from being like the antagonist of the story, and it's really not. Like he's just kind of like a dick who shows up, and he's the problem. Yeah. But it's not really like he has machinations. He's just you know he's an idiot fascist. What are you gonna yeah. do with that? He's the Boy Scout who took the rules like way too far. Exactly. So you know later he will work for another evil villain and fight Superman. You know it's just like oh okay. I really like this next set of. Panels because they're doing the they're doing it again. They're yeah. doing he's it again. Back home, except he's Clark with like again. major emphasis on his wedding ring. Damn right. <laughs> he is really Don't forget married. you were married. Yeah. Yeah, but does he burn the food still? Yeah. <laughs> he just this man cannot cook. That's right. He's distracted. He's like, man, Lila coming to the door in the towel. <laughs> Ah, Lois, ah, I'm sorry. Well, I like that Lois is sensibly dressed. Like she's yeah. wearing a tank top and pajama bottoms. I, and maybe that's just to highlight the alien nature of like Candor, you mm -hmm. know, like that's her towels were the equivalent of earthen pajama pants. I noticed he it's doesn't, not, uh, doesn't exploitative. think to himself that she's a goddess. Well, that's the pain. Like he did about Lila. I don't know what you mean by that. No, yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, maybe because like he loves her because she isn't. Mm. His plan is he's going to go back to Candor and like he'll just periodically check in and try and fix this because like literally he's been away for a hundred years so he has to go back and be like, hey, sorry, oh, the rumors about me are true. I'm not God, but like I was there and I was supposed to check in on you guys and I didn't. So I guess I don't really know any of you anymore. Right. But hey, don't worry. I'm going to set the clock back a hundred years and none of you will exist. Right, well, <laughs> they, I never see the payoff of the hundred year jump. Okay. But I do know that, like, the next several times that we see Candor in our regular reading experiences post-crisis, it's just Candor. Like, this plucky band of motorcycle riding misfits don't come into play. Superman doesn't go, like, joyriding with these guys on, like, Saturdays. Well, yeah, they saw him flying, they're like, man, motorcycles are lame. I guess I'll get a gravity belt. Fine. <laughs> I don't know why I never did this! It's amazing! So it all ends 
with Prius in a cave on Earth somewhere trying to carve the S off of him because he no, he no longer has the faith. He's oh. fought God and he and he found him lacking. But he Is it like on his chest? Yeah, it's fused to him because of the explosion, you see. Oh. And so he can't get it off, so he just carves it like a, a slash through it. Like, no, no. no. S. <laughs> And you're like, all right, Prius, you suck. And everyone who uses him in the future is like, yeah, Prius sucks. I can waste Prius, right? Like, I don't want to waste Lila, but like, I will use How Prius. How has Darkseid never sought out Lila? Right? Yeah, Talon Caldwell's art is fantastic. I love it. I think it's, the whole point of the book is to be looked at. Despite the fact that Joe Kelly himself wrote it. Alongside Michael Turner, who of course did a fine job as well. Uh, but all the covers are done by Michael Turner, which are also great. I think they're great. Uh, and yeah, I've seen mixed results for this book. I've seen uh, mixed criticism. People saying like, this is like super dumb. And I've seen people say, no. That is the most positive criticism I've seen of it. No! Come on, let me like this. <laughs> yes, that. And I'm like, honestly, I'll tell you, when I read it for the first time, I was like, this is kind of cool. You know, like it's not gonna win any awards, but it's fun. It, it's, it's perfectly harmless, except for the whole like, did you really sleep with Lila? Yes. <laughs> yes. A lot. Well, like maybe, I mean, how long has he been there? Maybe she post-hypnotically suggested that he slept with her, but didn't, you know? No. <laughs> like any issue of uh, Fathom, this is a fine piece of uh, feminist so you mean Aspen? literature. Uh, I, I mean, you know, the characters of Fathom, but yes, Aspen, the publisher. I Wait, don't, I, I don't, what? I, don't, I thought there were... No, Aspen is the name of the publisher. Aspen's the publisher. Fathom, Fathom, is Fathom, the, Fathom, book. Fathom is the book about the woman who's like, who like swims and stuff. I've never read a single issue of Fathom. I've but no you've fucking seen idea. it. I've seen a million. I well, no, own seen... a trade of it because of the art. You do? Yes. Yeah. What happens in Fathom? I read part of it and I was like, this, this is, is too terrible. Much. It's all about aquatic people, like... Okay. Yeah, but doesn't she look like that? She looks exactly like that. Yeah. But she doesn't have okay. the things. Yes, she looks like that because everyone in an I Aspen know. book looks like that. Yes. But, like, it's got, like... He does this a lot with the fabric, does, too, where yeah. it's, like, a sheer fabric with, like, sparkles on it. Like, yeah. I've seen, like, Turner do that a lot. Yeah. Um, but, no, like, it's... For what it is, it's, like, it fits perfectly. Like, the art and the coloring, it fits perfectly for the tone yeah. of the story, like, what they're doing with it. Mm -hmm. Like, have we seen this sort of story before where it's like, Superman forgets what's happening? Yeah, only in one of the greatest Superman stories of all time. Yeah, it's not <laughs> quite the same as that, though, because it is in reality happening. Right, it's actually in continuity, and, you know, we're trying to have some fun with it. Obviously, I mean, uh, the whole damn thing is inspired by, like, can I draw Superman on a motorcycle? Is that cool? Yes. Yeah. And also, but, like, like, can we very capitalize cool. what on... What comes from that? How did that story create? What's going on with Candor at the time? Right. Well, once you once you go, all right, I need to, in a story explanation, describe how Superman is riding a motorcycle. It's like, well, he's got to lose powers. Well, how would he lose his powers? Like, well, you know, I guess it'd be really complicated to have him get hit by a ray or, you Or know. be around that weird kryptonite. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, and then if you look, Luther story, why is he riding a motorcycle? No, he'd have to be riding a motorcycle for like a purpose. And how would he get a motorcycle? That'd be a cool motorcycle, I want to invent one. Yeah, it has gonna, to be like a space bike. Right, exactly, and how's he gonna get a space Oh, you know what? Oh, he can go to Candor, they have like, they probably have space technology and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, you know what? Flying cars. And they got, the, they got the red sun to keep them from, they keep the powers in check. Oh, we got a story. He's in Candor. But why would he be riding a motorcycle? Would he be working for the police force? Wouldn't they recognize him? How would I get rid of the people on Candor who would know who Superman is? Well, I could advance time like 100 years and then nobody would remember him. Ah, story. And Michael Turner's like, and draw a foxy babe <laughs> who wants to bang him all the time and does. <laughs> and his wife is totally cool with it. Cause she never knows. <laughs> So there you have it, Superman Godfall, if it's available, I will put it in the comments down below. You should read this sometime, it's really cool looking, and uh, and, and there's a story in here somewhere. Uh, but also, Superman wears this outfit for like, maybe 10 collective seconds. It's uh, kind of cool, I, I enjoy it. It's rad, I can't wait for Todd McFarlane to make a figure out of it. Yeah, you know what it is? It's a track suit. He's wearing his racing leathers. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. And a cape. Right? And a cape. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny, like, you know, you got this awesome image of, like, the burning Superman logo. Yeah. yeah Prius has that at the yeah, end of the movie. Yeah, we see it. Like, we see it. It's literally everything you see in this book, you get. How often can you say that? We'll see you guys next time with a new episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs>
Come on, Tiffany, bike with us. I'm not biking with Come you. Come on, join our gang. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna fly away. Oh, <laughs> that is it. way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> There you have it. <laughs>